after the hardships of mountain crossings, we headed east. The next point on our route was the Bicas Gorge, located in the northeastern part of Romania, on the borders of Nam and Hargita districts, which is part of the Kele Bicazuli Hazmas National Park. The gorge was curved by Bicas River and connects Transylvania with the historical Romanian region of Moldavia. It is about 8 kilometers long and its limestone walls rise to a height of over 300 meters. The DN12 sea road crossing it, meandering for 5 kilometers in steep serpentines with the rocky walls on one side and steep slopes on the other, is one of the most picturesque in the country. Hence we plan to go to the sea, to catch a bit of the sun for at least two days and just to sit still for a while, but the problem was the weather which gave us no hope of basking on the golden beaches of the Black Sea, and we decided that there was no point in doing another few hundred kilometers just to sit there in the rain. That is why we decided to go back to the Maramures mountains we liked so much and spend the day more lazily before. The vaulting to refresh in our wardrobe a bit. Between Bikas and Gheorgheni, by the DN12 Sea Road, we found a cozy clearing by the river, which was perfect for another campsite. And taking advantage of the momentary break in the rainfall, Vila started doing the laundry. We have a 10 liters plastic collapsible container into which we pour heated water and wash things in the biodegradable liquid. Rinsing takes place directly in the river, and this way we do it like our grandmothers did. Using the pole normally used to extend our awning, I stretch a few ropes, and thus we obtain enough space to hang a large amount of laundry. If you ever wondered how we manage without a normal toilet during such trips, I'm in a hurry to explain. As I belong to the group of guys who likes to have peace, time and a bit of comfort during this activity, I decided that squatting is not an option. That is why I bought an extremely comfortable chair in Australia that meets all of the above assumptions. We adhere to the principle of leave no traces so an inseparable element of preparations is taking a shower with you and going to the secluded place. There, when we find the right spot, with an even ground and a suitable view, we place a chair on the ground to mark the position, then we dig a small hole, place a chair over it, and we are ready to start contemplating. Sitting comfortably, we can focus as long as necessary without worrying about numb legs, trembling leg muscles or pain in the knees. The sheet stretched between the front legs of the chair protects one's trousers from possible wetting. After all, the stem dug out of the ground goes to its place and we, relaxed and chill, leave the spot without any traces of our being there. The next morning greeted us with sun and windless weather. It was not hot, but still washing in the stream is a very refreshing experience, and I like it very much. Contrary to Viola, who does not like cold water. Taking advantage of the nice weather, we slowly finished our morning bustle and continued northeast. We spent the next two days mostly driving. The next two points on my map turned out to be not very spectacular places, and reaching them only added us unnecessary kilometers. As we like to be on the move though, and such a road trip is a way to relax, it was not a big problem for us. Well, maybe apart from Kira, who was obviously fed up with the constant driving sometimes. This, however, was also an opportunity to take advantage of more civilized forms of vacation. 
spending some time among people and tasting local cuisine. A nice change from everyday life, during which the meal is treated rather as something to satisfy the hunger and not also to be a feast for the palate. But just such moments allow you to appreciate the luxury of dining in restaurants and simply being served. The hardships of mountain crossings took their toll not only on us. Shortly after moving on, all the controls related to the braking system lit up on my dashboard. After visual inspection, I did not observe any disturbing symptoms and everything returned to normal after moving away. This is a problem that was revealed again during another trip, to Sardinia this time, but I will tell you about its origins in the next materials. Meanwhile, we return to the Carpathians. We found ourselves again in the Bistra Nassau district, but this time we drove up from the south with the Repede and Negoyasa Mare peaks in the Rodna Mountains National Park in front of us. We also used a short break to adjust the tire pressure to the mountain trails to refill the drinking water and went for a short reconnaissance to see if the trail we were on was possible. As usual, the drone turned out to be invaluable in the exploration again and unfortunately we had to turn back, because the trail was becoming a walking trail, so we were forced to look for a detour. We started our ascent to the pass near the top of La Pelui Mare, northeast of the place where we had stopped previously. As the uphill ride took place through very narrow serpentines on which there was no question of turning back, Learning from the experiences I talked about in episode 5, I tried to predict potential threats, and using binoculars I tried to determine the possibility of the planned route. Fortunately, there were no snow patches along its entire length visible, so it seemed that we should be able to reach the pass itself. During this short break, Phila prepared another meal, I traced the route again, and having become convinced that we could go farther this way, we continued our journey. The trail turned out to be very picturesque. Throughout its length, we encountered very rarely growing vegetation, so the views were breathtaking. Considering the width of the road, on which barely one car fit, and the steep slopes on the left, which only intensified the feeling the height at which we found ourselves, this section definitely provided us with a lot of impressions. Not only visual. Any unevenness on which the car tilted to the left increased our adrenaline level and made our head slightly damp. The fender, however, was great in such an end room. And after about an hour, we found ourselves on another pass, where we decided to look for a place to stay somewhere for a night in this area. It was very windy that day, so we figured we would go a little lower in the hope that the wind would be slightly less noticeable there. The trail still ran along the steep slope and we still hoped that after the next bend we would not encounter a blanket of snow that would prevent us from continuing our way. Because firstly, there was nowhere to turn back and secondly, we really didn't want to have this gulf on the right side and tilting in that direction if we had to come back. The road, with each successive kilometer, tested us more and more, and driving on large stones exposed by the water dripping from the slopes required great caution with such a heavy car. But we made it, and this time we found a perfect place to camp, 
a relatively flat part of the pass with breathtaking views around, in complete wilderness. Taking advantage of the relatively early hour, we went for a walk, unaware that it will be a long one. The weather started to change rapidly, the wind grew stronger and suddenly rainy clouds appeared. Kira, running freely, lost sight of us for a moment and we lost her. Our exhortations had no effect. The voices were bogged down in the gusty wind, the curvature of the terrain effectively muted them. We split up with Viola hoping we would be able to find Kira before the dark. Thinking about her, being alone in those woods somewhere and a vision of potential meeting with a wildlife such as a wolf or a bear gave us goosebumps. And the vision of such an emotional Kira in this situation was really painful. After two hours, we almost gave up hope and lost our voices. And on another helpless call to her, I heard her gasping behind me like nothing had happened. in Vila's voice how much we were afraid that we might come back from this trip without her. The next morning was so different from the evening the day before. Despite the fast-moving clouds somewhere high in the sky, Putting shadows on the sun-drenched peaks, it was surprisingly peaceful on our mountain pass. The calm of this morning matched our cheerful moods and the joy that we were still all together, and admiring the views during the next breakfast is not obscured by any worries. down it seemed we would have to find a detour again because the trail ran through someone's little farm and there were mounds of felt stand on the road indicating that the owner did not wish to pass this way however we met again with the hospitality of the locals and the owner began to remove from the road anything that could have prevented us from passing so i gladly helped him with that and after a few minutes we were able to move on The road through the forest we descended turned out to be the trail we saw going in the opposite direction, but our Garmin map did not show its continuity, so we did not decide to turn off the gravel road we were on. What's more, the turnout was located right next to a small waterfall, which seemed to be a perfect place to finally take a good bath, at least for me, because the water was freezing cold. However, I could not deny myself the possibility of taking advantage of its unlimited amount, which greatly facilitates washing long hair and generally decent hygiene of the whole body. Not to mention the energizing effects of immersing yourself in such an icy stream. Returning to the car had to be done with extreme caution, but fortunately everything went as it should.
After returning to Tarmac, I heard strange sounds coming from the rear hub. And the source of them turned out to be losing wheel spacer. Off-road driving is a much greater burden on the individual components of the car, so always listen to your vehicle and react before it is too late. As our trip was slowly coming to an end, we came to terms with the thought that we might not be able to bask in the sun this time. We still dreamed about spending at least one day somewhere by the water, having a substitute for a relatively normal holiday. However, we were still in the mountains and apart from the green vastness of meadows with mini farms stuck in them, we did not see too many traces of any water reservoirs. I found small lakes though on the map between the peaks of Eno and Enout, and we decided to check if it would be possible to reach them. The road leading in that direction turned out to be a more traveled trail, so there seemed to be a good chance of getting where we wanted. Although the higher we climbed and the more spotted the peaks in the distance become, the more we began to doubt it. We covered kilometers of green wasteland again, and again it was just us and the nature around. And again we felt that this is what we love the most during our trips. And all this, despite the slight dizziness of Viola, who being a bit afraid of heights, tried not to look left too often. Unfortunately, this time it turned out that the rest of the trail is cut off with snow caps, and we will have to spend this one of the last nights in Romania somewhere else than we planned. But it's the way it is during this type of trips. You never know what to expect. And we kinda love it.
一早。我呢